Welcome to Healthy University, where we'll discuss issues and subjects on how you can live a healthier and more productive life. And now, here's your host for Healthy University, Alan Eisenberg. Hi, and welcome to Healthy U. This is Alan Eisenberg, your host, and I'm here with Alexander C. Tots. I've had Alexander on before. He is a Los Angeles-based filmmaker. He's completing his first short documentary about the long-term effects of bullying called Mr. Brown's Class. Uh, I was lucky enough to have him come by and, and actually interview me for it, so I'm, I'm hoping that uh, it's going to be out real soon, Alexander. Mm. The film's finishing funds uh, are, cra- he's, are being crowdfunded uh, and will go live Monday, May 22nd, uh, 2017 on seedandspark.com. So first of all, welcome to the show, Alexander. Welcome back. Thanks so much, Alan. It's great to great to be had back and and uh, great to connect with you again. Yeah, and you know we're we're lucky that uh, Alexander and I have been able to talk several times in between the last time that um, he was on and now. And of course, we have much in common because the, his documentary deals with these long term effects of bullying and what happened in uh, in the past and how that affects us today. And in fact, we were just talking. And I felt it kind of relevant uh, before we get into your film, Alexander, to to just bring up 13 Reasons Why, because right Mm -hmm. now that's the hot topic, right? That's Mm -hmm. the news. And it's all around this idea of bullying and these this idea that this girl, you know, that there's controversy around it in the communities because they're worried that teens see it as glamorizing suicide Um, and. I, I felt it was more like there was a lot of blame going around. One of mm-hmm. the worst ones being that the school administration or the school counselor, in, in the case of the film, uh, is, is inept, doesn't know mm-hmm. how to handle these situations. And Alexander and I were just talking before the show, we both have stories of exactly the same thing. So, you know, what, what, what was yours? What, what happened with you? And I'll, I'll share mine too. Sure. Yeah, Alan, I... Um... Uh, one of the turning points for me in the real story almost 40 years ago, uh, when I was in and trying to get out of Mr. Brown's class, um, was connected to my then guidance counselor. And I, for different reasons, I'm not going to go into too many details, but suffice to say that my memory of our interactions, the the upshot was that I was given responsibility myself as a 14-year-old in high school to get out of this very, very toxic and threatening environment. Um, No ends, ifs, or buts. My my problem. Yeah. And I think that's, again, you know, I had the same experience and shared it on my old site. Uh, So in... 1979 for me, uh, this incident happened where, you know, I was the one who was the, the bullying victim and the school, the elementary school at the time thought the best idea for me was to send me to the counselor every week and for the counselor to ask me, you know, why do I think I'm getting bullied and what can I do differently? Mm. Which is, which is really victim blaming, you know? It's like asking a rape victim, what were you wearing? How much did you drink? That's what they do. And then so why then they wonder why vic, why why rape victims don't come forward in college because guess what? They've been drinking and they're probably wearing um short skirts or whatever. And mm. that's going to get brought up and they're going to get blamed when that has absolutely nothing to do with the crime that took place. Somebody violated their personal life. Mm. And that's what was happening to me. It you know, it doesn't matter If I'm different, it doesn't matter if I'm emotional, it doesn't matter any of that. Victim blaming on any level is wrong. So I wrote this thing where, for me, what happened was the counselor kept, I I got beat up pretty bad one day, and I had bruises and and a black eye, and and he wanted to know the name of the bully. And I'm like, yeah, at this point, I didn't trust anybody. So I'm like, no, no, I'm not going to tell you. And, you know, after going back and forth again, I'm, I'm, what, 11, 12? After going back and forth, he's like, I won't do anything. Just tell me who did this to you. And I, you know, okay, this is who did it. You know, and then I go back to class, and an hour later, I get called back into the counselor's office. And sure sure enough, there's the kid I named sitting there 
and they're smiling. He smile. I, I can picture it all. You know, he's smiling, talking to the counselor, and the counselor's like, you know, Billy, not his real name, says, yeah, it was a misunderstanding that you guys are really friends. Are you guys friends? And, you know, I basically said, well, we were once, but, you know, mm. not anymore. And, and he's like, well, you know, it seems like uh, it was a misunderstanding. So uh, you guys shake hands. And so we, we shake hands. And then, of course, he, he makes the biggest mistake, which is have us leave together. Mm. And, of course, right as we get around the corner, I get punched in the gut. I'm on the ground, can't breathe. Wow. And, and you know, to this day, I remember all this. And worse yet, I'm thinking to myself, you know, how, how badly can someone handle something? Mm. And then the movie Bully, the documentary Bully came out. Mm. And there's the scene of the administrator doing the exact same thing and blaming the victim when he won't shake the bully's hand. Mm. And then letting the bully go and admonishing this victim. And I tell you, I, Alexander, I, I don't know that I've cried any harder since mm. that day in 2013 when I watched that. Mm. knowing that nothing had changed since 1979, mm. at least in perspective of that. And mm. you know, as a documentary filmmaker, you know people know the cameras are on them. They're going to be on their best behavior. These schools knew that they were being filmed. So they think what they're doing is appropriate. And that's mm. shocking to me, you know? Did you mm. have any run-ins like that as you were filming that you felt like anything that shocked you? Um... Well, I mean, I, we, you know, the point of fact, and again, I can only say so much about it because we're, um, the film isn't done, but um, we, we basically tried to interview this former um, administrator um, and they refused. And I, it's a long story. I, I can't really go into it, but, um, but I'll just say from my perspective, um, it was very upsetting to me. And I was filmed at that moment in that upset. And it was really, it was really kind of, it was literally and figuratively hitting a wall that instantly for me as the filmmaker slash protagonist, um, was plain as day that, um, in terms of how, how bullying warps children in all respects, but especially um, the to pick up your um, term, Alan, the you know the survivors. Mm -hmm. um, it it mm -hmm. really you know it it damages us the most. Um, um, yeah, and that's and that's again not not wanting to dwell too much on thirteen reasons why, sure. but sure, sure. you know one one of the things that. I, I had written an article about it, and, and again, I, I, I kind of sit on both sides of the fence. It's There's things about it I, I like, yeah. um, you know, that, that are, we're, we're bringing to conversation that, mm -hmm. you know, people get changed, people are changed by the actions of others. And mm -hmm. I think that's the important message is that the, the, the main character who takes her life looks at it as, you know, these actions happen to me. And because of these actions, mm -hmm. this was a choice I made. Now, now I do make the comment that that suicide is a selfish act, and, mm -hmm. and I always try to say against that. I'm not saying the person's selfish. I'm saying the act is selfish because at that time they're not thinking about all the damage they leave behind for the surviving people. So again, we're survivors, and 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 that is something that. You know, I think about often, like, what if I didn't have a good family structure? What if I didn't have, you know, some friends? <laughs> you know, I mm. did have some friends or people right. I cared about or, sure. you know, would I have made a choice like that? And I think that's that's where we get into the tough questions, because even though I am, a, I was a survivor, you were a survivor, we still deal with the lingering feelings that go with surviving. Mm. You know, so so that's where I think the conversation is important. And you know, when you're when you're talking about you know someone like having that experience with that administrator, mm. you know, these things don't leave. It's not just just us, the the long term survivors of bullying. 
but these other people as well. I, right. I, you know, I know that. I know that that they still have to deal with um, that. And in fact, just just this week at my old high school, someone took their life. Mm. And you know that school. That's about the seventh or eighth person in three years at that school. Right. And they're trying to figure out what's wrong. You know what's yeah. going on. Right. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I was going to say, Alan, to speak to, I, I again, I, I haven't um, I haven't read um, the book or, or seen the Netflix series, but um, one the one point that I read that that really jumped out at me about what certain people in certain quarters perceive as controversial about this series and maybe even the book, I don't know, but, but, um, is, is the glamorization Mm -hmm. of suicide. Um, and you know, it's, it's interesting because I, I can relate to that in terms of what I'm doing and what my team is doing with Mr. Brown's class. Um, um, in a in kind of a similar way, in that you know people um, people love to share their their trauma with other people who share their trauma. I'm sure you know yeah. as in the work that you do and the wonderful work I have to say because you know you really have been a, a trailblazer from my you know amateur um, somewhat newbie estimation you know in in all of this um, you you really have cut cut a path for a lot of people. And so I know that, you know, as part of your coaching naturally, but, but just without that, even, you know, I'm sure people come up to you. And the point is that for me as a filmmaker, um, what I'm trying to do, I'm not trying to just simply pile something on to the heap of pain and anguish, which is very genuine and very important, as you already have done in your, you know, the amazing blog that you had started, you know, 10 years ago, just getting this stuff out there. We're trying to take this all a step further Mm -hmm. and show not only like how things can improve, but really like the, the lessons, the takeaways for our future audiences that they can essentially kind of be nurtured by, be, be comforted by in terms of, as you, you know, as you've been saying, kind of really changing things in a more positive way. That's, that's, yeah. that's our hope. And that um, was really, you know, my dream. Um, when I started 10 years ago, all I thought I was going to do was write my stories down on a blog and release them and try to release this pain that I felt in me. Mm. And then as it grew, other people wanted to do the same. And, and, you know, I I always think about the fact that 10 years ago, there wasn't a news, a news agency out there covering bullying as a a long-term issue. It was still kids being kids. Right. And what, what I recall most is that I wanted to write my story and I started looking around at books and even at movies and at other things and everybody who was writing about bullying was was writing about the damage and there was no no side that's why I said I, we got to talk about recovery we got to talk about and this was before I was recovered you know this was before I even <laughs> had to deal with my own personal demons sure Um, I just knew it, you know, I just knew that that was what I wanted to do, but I also knew I couldn't write a book about what happened to me because I didn't have the third act and the third act was recovery. Mm. And I didn't want to put something out there that just made people feel bad and say bullying, you know, bullies are awful because there's, you know, bullying happens and it's an unfortunate reality that in my opinion, it's, it's human nature. It's not something we're going to stop tomorrow. That's why I talk about recovery. There's plenty of people that talk about anti-bullying. There's plenty of people that dream about bullying ending. Uh, I don't. I don't think that's going to happen. I think we have to bring people uh, up and and help build them back up earlier and and try to take care of it at an earlier time. Notice it. Catch it. Mm-hmm. Handle it correctly. Um, all of these things that are very difficult because they require observation, time, 
care, empathy, not, not, not always natural things happening at schools or in communities uh, or even in our government right now. <laughs> and right. Um, I think that that's, that's my dream is that we can get to that point where no one's going to grow up like me for, for 30 something years after the bullying ended and still be suffering. Uh, and I, as you know, and as I know, we know lots of people who are. And I mean mm. people who don't ever leave their house, people that mm. can't hold a job, people who are living in a depressed state, who see no happiness whatsoever, uh, the, the mental and physiological damage it does to people. And then, of course, the people who don't survive. I mean, mm. I've known in my life four people who have, who have committed suicide um, mm. for different reasons or, or you know, caused their own death for different reasons. And and that's the reality, right? I mean, that's that's yeah. what we see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and you know, I was going to also point out this is one of the many positive things, Alan, that we got from production, thanks to our amazing supporters, a community that we've been able to build for Mr. Brown's class. But um, we were very lucky to interview um, uh, William Copeland, who's a psychiatrist researcher mm -hmm. at Duke University last, mm -hmm. uh, last fall. And, you know, it's, it's still from a scientific point of view, or in terms of mm -hmm. hard science, um, I don't, I'm not a scientist, so I, I can't really kind of divvy it up. But the point is in terms of like um, the work, as much as I understand it, that he does is basically surveying children into adulthood over long sweeps of time. We're talking 20, even 30 years. Right. And what one of the, the, the main takeaways that just leapt out at him which frankly, like he wasn't, you know, he wasn't an instant convert. He was, he approached the, the, the topic of the long-term effects of bullying in a very pragmatic, scientific, you know, proof before the pudding, I guess, uh, way um, that, that their physical, physical effects, mm, oh, yeah. um, you know, I mean, the, the, I was just thinking about this on the way, um, Alan, to um, you know, looking forward to, to, to speaking with you today. The the whole term of getting under one's skin, I think we're gonna. I, I personally think we're going to see a lot of reality, a lot of hard science that proves that's not just a metaphor mm -hmm. um, that mm -hmm. that originated with who, who, whichever writer. It, it's it's a fact. You can actually get under someone else's skin but but more importantly alan you know to speak to a lot of what you've also been you know what you've documented what you yourself have found is that is that the victims are the ones and you know as you know very well know because i believe um co please correct me if i'm wrong but you this is how you identify as a, a bully victim in the the scientific terminology um they you know those any category of victim in bullying is always going to suffer, and and unfortunately, you know, just the way it the way it is, the, you know, bullies. Um, uh, there's there's in no way, shape, or form this the, the kind of damage or experience that um, that survivors experience. Yeah, it's different. I mean, there there it's interesting that you know the characteristics are quite similar in terms of low self esteem and some of these other things that they say bullies have. But no, the, the damage is completely different, and I was lucky enough to get to interview Dr. Ellen DeLora, who mm. wrote Bullying Scars, and she's a, a professor and a, mm. um, a psychologist who wrote a very powerful book after she did a, an immense amount of research uh, about the, what, the, what those scars are, and mm. I, I recommend it highly, and mm. of course you can listen to the other podcast. So we have to take a quick break, Alexander, but when we sure. get back, I want to talk about the film, how things are going. You know, of course, I'm really excited to see it come out. So um, so when we come back, let's talk about that and, and where you're going with it. Thank you. Okay, Great. hold on Great. a sec, and we'll be right back with more Healthy You. You're listening to Healthy University with Alan Eisenberg.
Hi, and welcome back to Healthy You. This is your host, Alan Eisenberg, and I'm here with filmmaker Alexander C. Tots, who's just finishing up uh, his film called Mr. Brown's Class, which is about his his dealing with the long-term effects of bullying. And uh, it's just getting ready to come out, um, just doing a little more funding, I think, uh, to get it uh, marketed and out the door, right, Alexander? Yeah, um, uh, basically what we are looking at right now is uh, we're looking to gather support to finish the film, essentially for all post-production needs and purposes um, to pay our wonderful editor um, and do uh, what needs to be done immediately after that to make the film spick span shiny and clean and and easily understood and visit you know and cl- sharply uh, uh, ha- have a great picture um, uh, literally so that we can then get it out beginning with festivals we can enter it into festivals and um, my hope and prayer I would be knocking on, on wood right now but but we're on a podcast <laughs> um, but um, but uh, so that we can distribute this film or find a distributor rather right. who would be able to bring the film and I hope myself as well and possibly some of our collaborator participants as I call them you hmm. Alan Eisenberger oh. are one of them um, I, w- so I wouldn't mind going somewhere that, you can, you that, that might be a little bit of a, a, a yeah. little bit of a, uh, a reveal for our little yeah. Um, yeah. Um, our little podcast today but but yeah I'd love to love to bring everyone who's been involved in front of the camera to um, you know to be able to take the film uh, into corporations, yeah. HR kinds of settings, mm-hmm. into nonprofits of all varieties, educational, um, uh, health, medical, um, uh, advocacy of oh, all yeah. stripes, and um, uh, you know schools and and certainly theaters. Um, but yeah. but the key thing though is that we're. Um, I wish I could say we 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 are done at this point, but, but we have a distance to go and, and we're really looking to gather as much support as we can. Well, that's, you know, everyone, I, I tell everybody the same story, which you, they don't always get, but you know, I'm, you and I both have film in our heart. You know, I, I, I did film and video in my early career and, and always want to go back to it. Um, and I always tell people the same thing. Yeah. It's, you, you watch a movie and, you might have liked it or you might not have liked it. But, you know, Mar- Marvel caught on to this. That's why they make you watch the credits. <laughs> you, you, it's astronomical how many people have to be involved in the creation of a movie. And when you actually look, I mean, even a simple movie. Mm. And, and when you, you know, you think about a documentary where you're even tighter on the budget. Mm. And there's still a lot of people that have to be involved. Right. And when you watch those credits... <laughs> You go by, you know, nobody really gets it that you you were talking about thousands of people had to be involved in the making of this film you just watched, whether whether you liked it or not, it mm. takes an enormous effort. Mm. And I know that, you know, even even your project um, is, has an enormous effort tied to it in terms of once it's done, that's just the beginning. You know, then you've got to get it marked, then you've got to get it out into the hands of somebody who might distribute it, hopefully... You know, on even if it's on HBO, Netflix, it never makes it to the big theater. You've still got to get hope it can get distributed and people right. can see it. I mean, that's right. that's what we do is that passion, right? Right. So, yeah. so how how has this experience personally changed you? Um, what what do you feel like you've learned uh, making this film? As yeah. Well, you know, it's it's interesting. Um, for, I'll just say from the very beginning, you might have been one of these people, Alan, who said, oh, well, this is really about you. And I would just like shake my head in, in disbelief and because this is about Mr. Brown and, you know, the people who I thought um, I remember having bullied me, I'll say, um, uh, and um, the circumstances around that, which all had to, to do with with everybody but me. But um, lo and behold... Um, everybody else for the most part was right. This really is my story. Yeah. However, in telling my story as honestly, as faithfully and as thoroughly as I can, 
as a filmmaker, not the protagonist, but as a filmmaker kind of stepping outside of myself and really being as objective and, you know, using an, enough artistic elbow grease and other grease that I can muster to really, you know, go as far as, as the film will allow that we can go in terms of really um, giving space, I very much hope and pray, to future audiences to be able to see themselves in my story, but also the stories that 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 naturally um, connect to mm -hmm. to mine. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think one of the most interesting things that I've experienced, and and I, I certainly you know I will be talking more because I, I really do want to take my ladder in the dark story, my memoir, mm, and, right. and make the film, and and you know actually travel back to where these things happened. But I, I have been lucky enough along the way of just even writing the book of talking to some of these people again who are in the book, you know, mm. whether they were friends and a couple were bullies and a couple mm -hmm. I actually even bullied because mm. I always tell people, I say, you know, hurt people, hurt people. Right. That's the way we're, the le it's not black and white. I mean, right. Right. you know, when I, when I was damaged and when I didn't understand what was wrong with me, I was quite a rebellious teenager. Mm. You know, I was not very nice to my parents and mm. not, not always nice to everybody else. Cause I was very insecure because of what happened to me. Mm. And, and people don't always understand that, you know, when that insecurity can come out as, you know, Oh, here's an opportunity for me to be popular. You know, when I went to religious school, I was popular mm. and with those kids and cause they didn't know what was going on in my regular school. So, you know, I had this opportunity, unfortunately, and, and made a bad choice and regretted it later. I was able to talk to that person and apologize. Mm. But when I actually talked to one of the bullies that I sat there, you know, in my mind, he was, you know, two foot, two feet taller than me, big, muscular, scary mm. guy. And I'm, I actually get to talk to him again. He's like, I don't even remember you. Mm. He's like, well, yeah, yeah, I kind of remember your name. But and I'm like, man, you're like the scariest monster I can imagine. Right. And and here's here's his perspective, which is nothing like mine. Mm. And and I think that's what you hope maybe you learned along the way is that, you know, it really is your story because it's what you remember. Mm. And and sometimes what 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 we find out, I have another friend who's making a documentary, sort of the same thing. He's he's Hispanic and he's talking about sort of the the whole um uh Freedom Act or or, or whatever it is where, you know, if you were if you were a child he, he's following the guy, I think, who went to Harvard, and then they wanted to mm. deport him you know, after he oh, went to yeah. Harvard. Sure, and, yeah. and he was sure that he was going to go talk to senators and they were going to side with him, and they didn't. Mm. You know, they he, he had his perspective, but it was not what everybody, he thought everybody would be behind him. Yeah. And, and you know, as, as we discussed, hey, everybody sees things from their perspective. So what did you find yeah. out? I mean, what did you find out like from others? Not to well, ruin, uh, nothing about the film, but sure. you know, along your journey yeah. uh, to, well, to do this. Well, there's, there's a lot and I'll get that, get to that in a second, Alan, but I just wanted to say as well that, um, you know, a large, to speak to your point, what you were just talking about, a large part of, I think what, what the takeaway for audiences for our film will be, will be um, about really putting oneself as far as possible into someone else's shoes. Mm -hmm. um, now, in, in terms of um, uh, what, what we got, what I found um, was, was profound, uh, I'll say. I mean, it, it blew my mind to be sitting there, and it was in at least a few cases. Um, one instance where just, you know, go figure filmmaking, um, uh, you know, contingencies and, and on the fly, it just so happened our, the 30th, my, my high school 35th reunion, um, was the only night that we could actually, um, interview and f film one of the, our key, um, uh, participant collaborators who remembered vividly being in Mr. Brown's class. Um, um, but, but other than him and, you know, he and I have talked a number of times, you know, it, it just, I mean, even if we're just talking to him, it just, it blows my mind, um, what they went through yeah. and how it stuck, 
Um, but what was even more interesting, though, is that we, we really talked to a whole range of people. You know, I mentioned we talked to this scientist. We talked to a former governor of Maryland who, ironically, um, uh, I had interviewed in high school. He didn't remember that at all. Um, I wasn't a very good, very good interviewer in, in 11th grade. But, but you know, all of these people from very diverse, and I'm, I, you know, bold underscore very diverse backgrounds, um, really find themselves um, um, taken and and have a, a real stake in in um, bringing greater attention to this this noxious um, uh, thing called the long-term effects of bullying, which which was in itself, you know, really like, wow, you know, like there are a lot of people for whom this is actually, you know, really on their radar. Yeah. And yeah. it's interesting you say, you know, one of the words that comes to mind when you talk about what, what you want the takeaway to be mm -hmm. is we really have to, we, we really have to spend more time learning about empathy. Mm. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, we're naturally sympathetic. And I don't know if you've ever seen Brene Brown's explanation of sympathy and empathy and how mm -hmm. different they are. Mm. But sympathetic is like trying to put a silver lining around someone's dark cloud, whereas empathy is to actually try to understand their dark cloud and be with them mm. in, this, in this darkness that they have. And I think that's the, the thing that more people need to learn is that you know, for some people, this suffering is is real, and we have to be empathetic to it, not sympathetic to it. Um, and and we have to to do that. We have to learn more about it. So it sounds like that's what you know a, a good goal is about teaching what I what we know is the long term effects, which are you know now called CPTSD or mm -hmm. adult post bullying syndrome, or there's so many names for it, but it's it's this psychological and physiological damage that happens after long-term abuse of a child as a mm. child. Mm. Um, and, and it's, you know, unfortunate, but it's real. Mm. And I thought, you know, I'm sure you thought for a long time it was just you. Like, why is this thing that happened in Mr. Brown's class haunting me for, you know, I can't get it off my back. Mm. And I thought the same thing. I'm like, my life was pretty good in high school, college, got married, had kids. And it's still sitting on my back, mm. you know, these seven years that I was uh, ab abused as a child by right. bullies. Right. And, and I, yeah. you know, that was the crazy part. Yeah. Yeah. And it's great, Alan, too, that you're using that word abuse, because that's something that during production Bill mentioned. And I think that's, again, mm -hmm. like, um, like what I was saying a second ago about, um, uh, about getting under one skin and, 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 you know, actually having hard science to kind of have this, um, tipping point about mm -hmm. that, the term peer abuse, which was, mm -hmm. was like the, the terminology that you've been mentioning, uh, you yourself work with, that's something that's going to be entering the common lexicon very coming right up. Um, it's, it's a fact. It's, it's something that, um, the science is already showing it's, you know, it's, it's everything that you and I are talking about today. Yeah. It's something that's as bad, if not sometimes as sometimes worse, which is mind blowing to me than actual what's considered child abuse or child neglect by, you know, by, um, by adults, by, you know, by responsible no, it's, it's, parties. You know, it, it depends on, again, what the abuse is. But certainly, I mean, I, the, the most shocking thing to me when I did my first site, you know, we were talking about my, my first site, which was bullying stories, was when someone submitted a story to me about getting gang raped in a gym mm. locker room as a child. Yeah. Mm. I mean, these boys gang raped him. As a as a twelve year old child, right? And I was like, yeah. I, you yeah. know, nothing was more shot. Like I'm like, God knows, nothing happened to me comparatively to right. what that person experienced, right. and and I thought, wow. And then they wrote it, which took huge courage, mm. and and you know, I've I've it always is in my mind some of the stories that I got. That's just one of them. I'm just mm. like, 
I just remember, and then and then the weirdest thing happened was one of the a young man, a young probably thirteen year old man from from England, read the story and thought it was so powerful that they made a YouTube video reading it, mm. reading the story. Wow! Uh, on YouTube, and I, and I thought, wow, you know, it's it's it, it's this thing that's so powerful, um, and so so dramatically damaging that it it has that effect. And I, I think you're right, peer. And, and now what I understand, what I've actually talked to people is this familial bullying, like mm. whether it's siblings or a parent, um, there's bullying going on in families, mm. uh, which is not abusive. It's bullying. Right. It's, it's, well, it's a form of abuse, but it's a bullying abuse. And I had this one gentleman on and he was just talking about how his, his mother and his brother, like follow him or he was homeless at one point because he just couldn't cope mm. but his mother and brother won't leave him alone he keeps trying to move away get away and they keep finding him and and keep nitpicking him and and mm. it, all he does is want to be left alone from them sure. and it's weird it's it's just there's so much going on in the world of bullying of course mm. I, I talk to a lot of people in workplace bullying now is such a big issue because at that point we're starting to get into legal matters. Really, we should always be in, in legal issues. But HR companies, all of that. Mm. Um, so, so where are you today? What's what's? I, I know um, you're you're at the end. Tell 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 us how we can help you. Yeah, Alan. Um, we actually have this very nifty, handy, and um, miracle of miracles, wonder of wonders, uh, easily communicable uh, URL uh, verbally. It's www.bullyinglasts, the word bullying and then lasts stuck together, dot com. Um, right now that can take people, I'm, right now as we're recording this, um, that takes people to our fiscal sponsor page um, where um, you can be connected to our website, our Facebook page, etc. Um, but but most critically f- to ensure that we actually complete the film um, where people can actually back the, the film uh, mm. with donations. Um, when we launch on May 22nd, um, I'm thinking it because uh, for my own reasons, it'll be some some time around seven in the morning here in Los Angeles, so ten o'clock Eastern time, mm-hmm. um, somewhere around then. Uh, www. www.bullinglast.com will go straight to our Seed and Spark page, and it will be uh, linked with that page. Uh, that it will steer people right to that page f- for our, our entire campaign, which will continue. Basically, until the beginning of July, we don't want to bother people's um, or, or interfere with not that we could with people's uh, Independence Day celebrations. So, um, mm. um, so we'll be going and up and running for a good forty something days. And um, um, uh, you know, I'm not sure when you will be when people will be hearing this, but if they they hear this before. Our campaign uh, starts formally on the 22nd. We are looking to get um, significant support, as I was telling you earlier um, uh, before we started, Alan, so that we can kind of lower our um, crowdfunding, quote unquote, mm-hmm. ask, as it were. So if there are any mm-hmm. anybody who is particularly passionate um, and and is willing to make a, a, a serious commitment f- to our project. We'd love. I'd love to talk to them directly. Um, um, I'm, I'm sure you know all my contact information will be there. It's um, and you can certainly reach me through the, the bullinglast.com um, yeah. link. And um, um, you know, I certainly want to don't want to neglect Alan saying that, that if there's any way personally, it's it's been a pleasure, a delight, and an honor to be connecting mm-hmm. with you. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart with this whole project. It's like we really are brothers from another mother, as someone put mm-hmm. it the other day. Um, and uh, I just I have such admiration for what you've done, you know, for this whole movement. And, um, yeah. you know, I wish you all the best with your work. If there's any way that we, myself, certainly, first and foremost, and our team can be a further service to you personally and your work and your your listeners and supporters, I'd, I'd love to know. We'd love to be able to be help, of help. Well, thank you, and and you know certainly back at you uh, for doing what you're doing. I think we really are a community. What people don't see behind the scenes, uh, if you're listening, 
is I have this humongous community now. Mm. Um, I'm 58 episodes into this mm. podcast, but I've been doing, like you said, I've been doing this 10 years, and I have this amazing, strong, wonderful group that you're included in, and I love it because, you know, not only do, uh, you know, what you said, I'm helping you, you're helping me. I mm, mean, you're, good. You're giving me uh, a reason to get up in the morning and say, you know, we're doing something about this. Right. Not I'm doing something about this. Right. But but we're doing something about this. And right. it's a big we're. And, and it, I believe that, you know, all of us together will make a difference. I mm. do believe that. And I believe what you're doing. And, and certainly I appreciate all the support you give me. And and I've, I've backed, you know, other other films. It's exciting to to know that you, you helped get a film produced. I don't mm. know. For me, it was. Mm-hmm. I, I helped uh, one that came out the, uh, a few years ago um, that was about a boy who uh, you know went into a school, school violence that was mm. bullying. Yeah. And I backed It was an independent movie. I backed it. I got a shirt. I got a signed <laughs> DVD. It was really exciting, you know, to know, hey, I gave them something. They made the movie. I watched the movie, and... and I know it's out there and mm. it's giving a message that I, I believe needs to be given. So thank you for doing what you're doing. I, I wish you all the luck on this new campaign thank to, you. to get it completed. And, you know, you know, you can count on me. So Excellent. Uh, I'll be there. And all my, all those links you mentioned will be up with the podcast. So Great. People Great. can easily get to it. Thank you. Uh, so I have one last question. Yeah, I'm, please. I'm going to start asking all my guests. So given where you are today, mm. What have you done to be a healthier you? What are you doing now that you didn't do before? Mm, great question. Um, I, I think, Alan, I'm um, able to take care of myself in ways that are deeper, knowing that like nobody else, you know, if, if, if I were in a relationship or if my parents were still alive, that, that no one else can really give me. Um, it sounds corny, it sounds trite, but, but frankly, in my um, blank, blank number of years on this planet in this life, mm-hmm. it, it, mm-hmm. it seems just a simple fact of life that, that to be able to do that allows me to be of service and to be able to give back um, – to others and, and to be, you know, to, to be, to be making a a positive difference, um, um, in, in the lives and, you know, passions that I, that move me. Yeah. And that's, that's great. I, I think we can ask for nothing more than once we learn about ourselves and, and care about ourselves, then we can help others. Mm. And certainly sounds like you've, you've gotten there, which is great. And, and, uh, I can't wait to, to see the movie. I can't wait to be there with you. Yeah. Uh, hopefully in cans, right? That's Con, yeah. 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 I, I always pronounce it wrong. Even though, like how many but years have Con, I been yeah. a French translator? But, um, <laughs> but, but, but definitely Alan, you know, because I, I am a DC area native. Um, um, you know, I, I, you, you, um, you will be there when we show, when, when we screen in DC. So, uh, awesome. I, I, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. we'll get it in front of the senators. You know. <laughs> That'll be our screening. Mm. Well, thank you, thank you, Alexander. Thank you uh, for being on the show. It's uh, today's episode with Alexander C. Tots, a Los Angeles-based filmmaker, uh, completing his film *Mr. Brown's Class*. Uh, please go to his website and uh, support it. It's a. I'm. I'm a, uh, hopefully, I'm. I'm not going to be on the cutting room floor, but uh, I hope not. Uh, I. I certainly look forward to uh, seeing the final piece and being there with you as uh, you you reap all the success that you deserve for the work you're doing. So thank you for being on Healthy You today, and I, I look forward to talking to you again. This is certainly not the last conversation we'll be having. Thanks, and back at you, Alan, so much. This is Alan Eisenberg with Healthy You. Please join us next time. Thank you for listening to Healthy University. Brought to you by Bullying Recovery, LLC. This podcast does not replace the need for medical advice, professional diagnosis, opinion, treatment, or services to you or any other individual. The information provided here or through linkages to other sites 
is not a substitute for medical or professional care, and you should not use the information in place of a visit, call, consultation, or the advice of your physician or other health care provider. Join us next time for more Healthy University.